so in this video we will uh, study about the calorimetry and heat capacity so first is calorimetry what is the calorimetry so this picture shows how calorimetry look like and uh, calorimetry is used to measure the enthalpy change or measure the heat flow since uh, we cannot know the exact enthalpy of the reactant and product we that is why we measure delta h means change in heat how much change is happening from one reactant to product in a chemical reaction and the instrument used to measure the heat flow is called calorimetry so calorimetry are there are two types of calorimetry they will be at constant pressure calorimetry and constant volume calorimetry so in this picture this calorimetry is represent is an example of a constant pressure calorimetry where you can see there are two styrofoam glass are used and they are stack on each other they are creating kind of a vacuum in between and the reactant or reactant solution are in the second glass which is covered by the cork and this cork have a glass stirrer which will keep mixing this solution and then change in heat or change in or flow in the heat can be measured through this thermometer so this was the about the calorimetry we will study in the next two slides uh, about the constant pressure and constant volume once again but in the next slide we will study about the heat capacity what is the meaning of heat capacity so the heat capacity is uh, also called the specific heat capacity and it represent by capital c so heat capacity is the heat required to increase the temperature of any system and uh, the heat required to increase the temperature of a system depend on the mass and the temperature so there are two cases here in one case we have a glass of water and a bath tub of which is filled with water if we have to increase the temperature of this half glass of water 1 degree celsius and if we have to increase the temperature 1 degree celsius of this uh, bath tub which is filled with water in both cases the heat require will be different here we need less heat here we need more heat because we have less amount of water here and here we have more amount of water so we can also write like q which is heat is directly proportional to small m which is amount of the heat amount of the substance and in case 2 if this glass both glass have the same amount but uh, we have to increase the temperature up to 40 degree celsius in this case and in this glass we have to increase the temperature up to 90 degree celsius so the heat require in both glasses will be di different you need less heat to increase the temperature of this glass up to 40 degree celsius and you need more heat to increase the temperature of this glass up to 90 degree celsius so we can also write that q means uh, heat require is depend on the difference in the temperature delta t so once we will remove the proportional proportional um, sign we will write equal and then we put one constant you may have studied this in many time in the physics 
So here we use the constant as a C and this C is a heat capacity or a specific heat capacity. So we can also write this uh, equation like C is equal to Q over small m delta T where C is a specific heat. So this is the way we measure a specific heat for a reaction or if we know the specific heat we can find out how much heat is required for particular mass and how much temperature is needed to increase. So once again about the specific heat or heat capacity. The heat capacity of 1 gram of a substance or the amount of the heat needed to raise 1 gram of substance by 1 degree Celsius Kelvin or 1 degree Celsius is uh, written as uh, Q over M delta T and the unit is as joule J for joule over gram small m is gram and delta T is in the Kelvin. It can be either in Kelvin or degree Celsius but when we will write in delta T it will be basically in number and this can also be write like a calorie per gram Kelvin and where C is a specific heat of a substance Q is heat transfer or heat flow, M is mass of a substance in the gram and delta T is temperature of a substance, change, basically change in the temperature, delta means change. So here we have a table for some listed compounds. The amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by 1 Kelvin or 1 degree Celsius is heat capacity and if the amount of the substance heated in 1 gram it is the specific heat. So if we are heating 1 gram of a substance then the heat capacity is called a specific heat. And if the amount is the 1 mole, then this heat capacity is called molar heat capacity. And in this table 5.2 that shows the specific heat of some substances at 298 de degree Kelvin. So a specific heat means if the amount of a substance heated is 1 gram. So quantity are, is using 1 gram. So 1 gram of nitrogen, 1 gram of aluminum, 1 gram of iron, 1 gram of mercury when heated 1 degree Celsius then the heat required a specific heat is these are the values. Same way this is kind of standard or reference values are given in this table for 1 gram water, 1 gram methanol, 1 gram carbon dioxide gas and 1 gram of calcium carbonate. So if we are taking 1 gram of water which is 14.5 degree Celsius and if we need to increase 1 degree Celsius of this water we require 4.18 joule of heat. So this is this much heat which is called a specific heat. So a specific heat is for 1 gram of amount and heat capacity for any other amount and molar heat for 1 mole of a substance. So this was the, about the uh, specific heat or heat capacity. And uh, let's talk about again the constant pressure calorimetry. So constant pressure of calorimetry is used 
by carrying out our reaction in aqueous solution when we do a reaction in aqueous solution in a simple calorimetry the heat change of a system can be found by measured the heat change for the water in the calorimetry so this uh, we are talking about the reaction in the water and when we do reaction in water so the heat change will be equal to in the water and the specific heat for water is we have based on the table is 4.184 joule per gram kelvin we use this value for the dilute solutions and we can calculate to through this formula how much heat is required by c c is a specific heat mass of the total solution and uh, delta t so in the next uh, slide we will see how this uh, constant volume calorimetry is used so that is also called bomb bomb calorimetry because we have to do this in a steel container which will be completely sealed and uh, not a single vapor will come out so volume will remain same so reaction can be carried out in a sealed bomb such as in this one and where we have insulated container and then bomb for this reaction chamber and which will have water and then sample will be inside there will be a stirrer which will mix and then uh, sample ignition wire will be there which will give heat to work for the reaction and then we will measure change in temperature or heat flow through thermometer so the heat absorbed or released by the water is a very good approximation of the enthalpy change for the reaction so whatever the reaction is going on if it is absorbing the heat so the temperature of this color bomb calorimetry will reduce and if it is giving heat to the cis environment so the temperature of water will increase and then uh, we can use this formula q is equal to c in delta t to find out the value of in uh, heat required and uh, because the volume in the bomb calorimetry is constant so what is the measured it is really the change in internal energy which is delta e and not the delta h and for most reaction the difference is very small for this type of uh, in bomb calorimetry reactions next uh, uh, we will take a practice question the specific heat of ethanol is 2.46 joule per gram kelvin and how many joules of heat are required to heat 193 gram of ethanol from 19 degree celsius to 35 degree celsius so let's see how we will solve this question so if you see that what are the values are given in this question so c is a specific heat is given which is 2.46 gram joule per gram kelvin and then how many joules of heat are required so basically q is they are asking and uh, to heat 193 gram of ethanol so a small m is given 193 gram and then uh, from 19 degree celsius to 35 degree celsius so the temperature initial temperature 1 t1 is 19 degree celsius and t2 is given 35 degree celsius so since we know c is equal to q over small m and delta t and we have to find out q so we can rearrange this formula like a q is equal to c m delta t and how we'll find the delta t so delta t will be the difference between the these two temperature 
So we can write like T2 minus T1, 35.0 minus 19.0 degrees Celsius, which will be equal to 16 degrees Celsius. So the delta T will be equal whether it will be in degree Celsius or in degree Kelvin. Because in degree Kelvin, we have to add 272 in both of them and then subtract. So the difference will come same. So we can easily uh, use uh, or change the unit of temperature from degree Celsius to de uh, degree Kelvin. Now we know each values. We have to just put all these in this formula, which is Q is equal to C 2.46 Joule gram per Kelvin multiplied by a small m, which is 193 gram multiplied by delta T, which is 16 Kelvin. So gram and Kelvin will be cancelled out and then Joule will remain on the top. So 2.46 multiplied by 193 multiplied by 16 Joule. Once you will multiply all these through calculator, this will come 7596.48 Joule. And then uh, we can move this uh, decimal point up to 3. So 3 means like uh, we can also write either kilojoule or we can also write like this 7.59 times 10 is power 3 Joule. So this is the way we can calculate the specific heat for a reaction and uh, we will see some other uh, practice problem in, in the chapter.